Uh, good to see you all. Um, I've split my presentation up uh, into three main groups that are part of, of what I do as a teacher. Preparation, which is talking about what I do to get ready for class and what I'm ask, uh, communicating with students to tell them what they need to do to get ready for class. Uh, instruction, so actually in class and the tasks that I actually assign to students to carry out so that they uh, engage with the content and learning takes place. And then assessment, which is checking um, that you know s such learning actually has taken place. And so the ways that technology has improved all three of these areas um, for me, and uh, for me, exploring new things, exploring technology, and uh, getting it to work as well as possible, um, and improving, and, and constantly revising, and thinking about um, whether it's you know really worth it to do this with a technological, or is it just is it better to do it the old-fashioned way? Which sometimes it is, but uh, evaluating that, I really like that part of my job. So um, happy to share with you. Um, uh, I have, I'm really lucky. We have a brand new textbook this year, and it has a great online component. Um, and this is a screenshot from our next chapter, uh, which is about adaptations. And so uh, the great thing about the online textbook, uh, the students can uh, access it from any computer. They have their own login. Um, they can, they can, it's basically the textbook in PDF format, but it's interactive. If you click on a vocabulary word, it'll pop up with the definition right away. Um, the students can take notes on the pages, they can highlight things, um, all things that you can't do with a, uh, with a typical textbook, and it's also a lot less heavy. Um, in addition, uh, the students have a whole range of other um, tools that come with the textbook, so we've got um, videos that it comes with, there's also interactive features uh, that uh, they can explore themselves or sometimes I'll make up a, a guide for them to uh, explore something and, and make sure that I, they get what I want them to get out of it. Um, down here in the bottom left there's different interview, uh, review, uh, interactive review, um, games, concept maps, things like that. Um, uh, so that's the online textbook and then the next is, uh, this is a screenshot from Schoology which is an example of a way that I'm uh, changing the way I assign homework, um, so uh, this is basically a, it's called a quiz in Schoology, but I figured out, well, I'm sure everyone, a lot of people have figured it out, but I realized that these quizzes would be great as homework because the students can uh, do the homework and then get instantaneous feedback on what they get right or wrong. And I usually give them, like you can see, uh, a couple attempts on the homework so that you know, they don't just do it right and get some of them wrong and that's it. They can do it uh, once, get some of them wrong, go back and fix that until they get, you know, as you can see, most of them keep trying until they get, uh, you know, almost perfect. Um, so uh, another, th another good thing about this is that I get this information. So this is what I see and um, then I can use that to inform what I want to do in class, like if everyone's getting this question wrong, then I, I clearly need to explain that, um, you know, step by step in class, so it's the use of it. Um, of course, I'm sure uh, you've probably heard, you know, students love Schoology because all their handouts, all their resources are there all the time, so I'm um, just pointing that out. And also um, the app, these are screenshots from the app, so uh, I've seen students doing the quizzes on their uh, phones and you know it's pretty small but the, they like to do that they just pop them out log into Schoology and they can uh, they can do the homework right on their phone which is it's pretty darn cool they could do it you know in the car they could do it on the bus on the way to a sporting event um, stuff like that um, again resources I can post stuff um, you know I can post stuff from my phone which is convenient for me as well um, I can talk to uh, students with messaging on the app, um, and so I think the Schoology app is really nice. It's just one of the amazing things about Schoology. I'm sure everyone will, uh, you know, rave about Schoology. They've, of course, it's not perfect, but um, I think uh, I wasn't here. But I think for uh, um, you know a couple of the tries for a learning management system, it didn't work out that well. But I think we really hit gold with Schoology. And I think uh, I read a, a tweet by Dr. Jones a couple. Uh, a week or so ago about how much people like it, so um, I'm one of those people. Um, 
Um, you know, this is an example of a video that me and Mr. Pepper made about. Mr. Pepper, I carry this. Whoa, 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 Mr. Stewart. This is actually improper microscope care, um, and then Mr. Pepper goes on to explain about proper ways to carry the microscope. Um, so, to be honest, we didn't make that many videos this year, but it is time-consuming process. Um, but. It's something that you know you, you try to make a few more every year, and then eventually they become an integrated part of of the of the school year. Um, so we filmed this using an iPad, uh, and then we were, and then Mr. Pepper edited it, edited it, um, so the students could look at this, and then um, you know something like a flipped classroom idea where they can watch a video, get some information at home, and then come into class to do some guided practice. We were it. This bottom part here is called the base, and it supports the entire microscope. This also is um, So that kind of sums up that, that preparation aspect, which uh, has a lot to do with Schoology, um, communication with students, um, and I really like the online textbook. Um, so going on to the instruction side of things, um, this is where it kind of uh, comes in and is a little bit more um, science-based, uh, I think specific to science and biology. Um, uh, we really like to collaborate and share. I know Peter's going to talk about that, but um, you know, using Google Docs to share things. Um, this is an example of a, like a template kind of worksheet that I made, uh, shared um, publicly on Schoology so that students could access it. They um, log into their Google accounts, they make a copy of the worksheet, and then they can um, work together or on their own to fill it out and basically this was a, like a research worksheet that I had them do in order to um, guide their research in terms of um, this was about biotechnolo uh, biotechnology um, presentations so I wanted them to give an overview, give examples and so I had them fill this out um, and then they could share it back to me um, and I could provide feedback to them, and we could have these loops going on so that students are, you know, be able to check in and know if they're on the right track and things like that. Um, now to the more science stuff. So we can uh, aggregate data on Google, Google Sheets. Um, this is from my IB class. Um, and you can see they got kind of silly with their names, but uh, second semester seniors, so what can you do? Um, they all did a lab where they were estimating population size, we could aggregate the data and take the average, and then they were able to uh, create this graph that um, shows the like migration pattern of, a, of an invasive species, for example. So nice because you wouldn't be able to do that if um, we had to like write all the data on the board or something. It would, it would take a lot longer and um, be inefficient. Technology allows us to do. Um, things that we would, would otherwise be impossible. For example, in science, we study things that are at the really, really small scale. Um, that's, for me, in the biological realm. In, you know, over in the physics classrooms, they're studying things that are at a really, really huge scale, which is also useful to have a simulation that can um, provide that scale for you. Um, and then also time scales. So if we wanted to study this population of birds over time, um, you know, we, that's, that's not realistic to do in a high school setting, but if we simulate it uh, and, you know, we can, we can run different trials, we can look at the data in a graphical format or a table format. Um, and this is a great site. This is from explorelearning.com, which is also abbreviated as the Gizmo site. And uh, there's different gizmos, and they have a lot of great resources, and I love using this um, to expose students to uh, types of labs that they wouldn't be able to do otherwise. In, you know, in a hands-on setting, they also have great assessment features as well. So, um, so collaboration, organizing things for students, aggregating data, um, and simulations. And then the last kind of realm here is assessment. And I've gone to mainly assessing my students in terms of, a, of, of like, instead of a pen and paper, written test uh, or a, an end of unit content uh, focused assessment. Um, I've gone to doing it on Schoology because I've found that this is more efficient for me. Um, it's, I can, 
you know, increase the fairness of my tests. I can, you, I can mix up the questions. I can mix up the, the order that the answers come in. I can, um, you know, I can have different formats of questions really easily and really easy to grade. Uh, so for example, at the top we have a fill in the blank question, um, your typical multiple choice question, but there's also uh, matching options where students are matching things from two columns. There's ordering, so ordering things like the steps of a process or um, putting things in order by size. So there's lots of, of cool ways that Schoology can help me assess students' learning. Um, again, I get the results in an easy to read uh, format like that. And then this is another uh, resource that the school has, which um, it's called SchoolNet, and it goes through the, um, the gradebook software. So it integrates with gradebook, which is really nice. Um, I found that I like to use this, uh, use this for like exams. Um, and more than the, the typical unit tests because um, it's a little bit more secure. So it's, it's, it's um, easier to uh, prevent students from being tempted to maybe look up a word online or something while they're doing an online test. And um, this, for this type of software, uh, Students aren't able to go back. I forgot to mention for the Schoology test, um, I can, you know, once the test is over with and everyone's taken it, I can open it up to the students so they can go back and look at the test and they're all organized online for them. So they can look at all the questions that they got right or missed. Um, for this software, it it's, keeps it secure. The students cannot go back and look at the questions. So it's, uh, it's more of a, I like to use it for the exams more. Um, in terms of non-test assessments, so things like presentations um, or lab reports, this is a screenshot of Turnitin, which is integrated with Schoology. So another great thing about Schoology, um, students can put their files, upload them into a Dropbox, and it's automatically up uploaded to Turnitin, and the Turnitin software you know, chugs it through. Um, so I can grade, for example, this is a uh, this is an uh, IB internal assessment, and I can easily see that this student has, you know, there's, there's a lot of results over there, but uh, all things considered, this is, this is, you know, shows me that the student didn't plagiarize. I know it says 7%, but, you know, they're all like little pieces of 1%, which is like a couple words here and there. But anyway, the point is, you know, preventing plagiarism. Um, presentation, so, I just had, like I said, just had students do presentations about different biological, biological technologies. Um, so they collaborated on this with Google Slides, and I had access and I could comment on them and provide them feedback, um, and they did a great job with that. And then um, earlier in the year, I had students make a presentation of um, the immune system, the immune response to pathogens. Um, so they used their actual, their own devices, um, most of them did, to take images. So all these are images that you're seeing played uh, quickly as in, a, in a stop motion type way. Um, so this is showing the, uh, like the digestion of a pathogen and stuff like that. And they did this on the whiteboard. And then they were able to use the computers to put it together into a, an animation that kind of assessed, I assessed this to, um, you know, find out how much they had engaged with the, uh, the concept of the immune response. Um, and so that last, that um, is assessment. So that's the last part of my, uh, of my trifecta here of my teaching practice. Um, like I said, I love trying new things and so there's a lot of stuff that I didn't put on here that are simply ideas in my head that I'm hoping to get to and you know every unit is a new opportunity to try something new or get rid of something old that's not working and so um, I hope that was helpful in understanding how I use technology in my classroom. Thank you Mr. Stewart. 
Um, and on a side note, you know, as, as, uh, as an administrator and as we try, start to compete for new employees and new members of our community to come in, young teachers come into our building and they look for resources like this to teach. They want to use those things in their classrooms. They're expecting some of that stuff to be on hand when they get here. So that if we want to compete for the best and brightest, we're going to need to continue to have things for them to explore learning and teaching in their classrooms. So uh, we're going to continue to move that forward. And I thank Dr. Jones for really leading in that regard.